less than uh, half of that, mm -hmm. it's not equal. Uh, I'm not sure why. I mm -hmm. think the world is an unfair place, mm -hmm. but we have to fight for our space uh, uh, on the planet, and, mm -hmm. and that's what we're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a man's world, as, as, uh, as it is said, uh, but we also have to prove that you know, we're, worth, we're worth the money. Um, and no, we're not, we're not treated equally. No, mm -hmm. it's the truth. It's the truth. <laughs> yes. No. Now, we, we are talking about, you know, sports in Kenya. I, yeah. I mean, so far, it's a big achievement having the only Kenyan in this year's, uh, the only Kenyan, the only African in this year's top 40 under 40 sports leaders in the world. But the question is, yes, you have, you have been listed in the 40, top 40 under 40, but what are we doing in terms of sports development? Okay, so it's, it's, it's great that you bring that up mm -hmm. uh, because sports development is broken into different areas. Mm -hmm. So you have the athletic you know, element, mm -hmm. then you have the coaching element, you have the refereeing element, and then you have the administrative element. Mm -hmm. um, and I can, you know, we, I can say that we can see a lot happening in the athlete uh, development space. Mm -hmm. So you have Safaricom doing the Chapa Dimba. Uh, you have a lot of uh, individuals who are running their own athletic clubs. From an athletic perspective, I'm, and I'm talking here about running and, and, and stuff, uh -huh. there's a lot of investment behind uh, our athletes. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at... Uh, Basketball, I can see quite some bit of interest from different quarters. From an athletic perspective, mm -hmm. I can say that there's a lot being done. They, you know, when you go into schools, the high school league is fantastic. But then what happens beyond that? Mm -hmm. Right? That is, that's where the big question is. That's, that's where the, that's, Leagues, that's, when you talk about schools, they are run very well. But yes. there's that gap between high school and clubs. Look, so this is the thing. Yes. Um, I remember growing up and my mom, and I hope she's watching, mm -hmm. she would tell me, sports are like happy. She's my number one fan now. Yes. But, but I understand where that question comes from mm -hmm. because unless you're very lucky, unless you're Mariga, unless mm -hmm. you're Wanyama, unless you're Oliech, you know, unless you're those guys, unless you're ath uh, an athlete like Manangoy or whoever, mm -hmm. unless you're that and you make it at the global level, it's very difficult for you to make a living locally, mm -hmm. right? And if you can't make a living locally out of sport, not everybody's going to be a global star. It's true. If, you can't, if we can't be able to create um, a business or, or a commercial structure, around sport, then it becomes difficult. Now, you cannot create that unless you have proper development structures around the game, uh, the coaching. You have competitive structure around uh, the administrative bit. So you create opportunities for marketers, for you know, uh, uh, different levels of administrators. Mm -hmm. Unless we have that moving towards that direction, it becomes very difficult for us to say that you know, we can move sport to the next level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we have, I mean, if you go to America, um, a three-year-old has access to everything. He has access to golf, basketball. So whatever he gets into, if he feels like that is where, uh, or the parents feel like that's where I want my kid and that's where they've got talent, they have um, a step system mm -hmm. that gets them to anything that they could be. Not everyone in America becomes a star as yeah. well, but they have opportunity. And that's one of the things that's you know, kind of lacking. I'm, I'm, I'm happy that the new education system is now focusing on not just education, uh, but also the, you know, the, the athletic ability of children and the, the artistic ab ability of children and how to support that. But so is, is, is that why you started the Kapu Elite? Uh, one, of the, one of the reasons why I started the Kapu Elite, I was inspired by what the NBA is doing with Junior NBA in Africa, mm -hmm. and I said that we have to find local solutions as well at home that can be able to inspire young people to get into basketball. Mm -hmm. So with the Kapu Elite, what have you seen? What, what are we lacking? I mean, you've dealt with Junior NBA, the first uh, edition that we had here in the country last mm -hmm. year, mm -hmm. and you have your own Vikapu Elite. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what are we lacking? Infrastructure. Infrastructure. Um, I have to buy balls. Yes. Of course, anybody would have to buy balls. But mm -hmm. a basketball, a good basketball costs, what, about between 3,000 and 6,000 shillings. Mm -hmm. If I'm hosting one camp in one venue, I need 50 basketballs. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not cheap, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's about, what, 30,000, 40,000 shillings. Mm -hmm. uh, and you have to change that every three months, right? Um, I don't have a facility that is mine. So I have to work with either a school that has a facility, and that's not consistent because at some point either they have something running within their facility or not. Uh, we don't have community facilities anymore that you know are open. 
-hmm. for either basketball or football or whatever. You can see that our infrastructure is pushing away. Um, the, people are picking up spaces that kids were using. When I grew up, I had access to you know different spaces that I could play. Uh -huh. But uh, the more urbanized we get, funny enough, the more we are losing those spaces, and our kids don't have access to those facilities. Those are some of the biggest challenges. And putting up a facility is not necessarily cheap. Uh, basketball is one of the cheaper sports, if you ask me. You need a, a bucket, mm -hmm. uh, but you have to buy a ball. A, a basketball is not like a football where you can make uh, yeah, a, a ball from the polythene. Uh, and so having access to, um, to, to infrastructure is one of the biggest challenges. The other thing I talk about is human resource. Mm -hmm. We don't have enough coaches. We do not have enough um, administrators. We do not have enough knowledge around the business of sport. Uh, but that's why we're here, Sports Connect Africa, to be able to link the world to Africa and so mm -hmm. that we can bring that knowledge mm -hmm. locally and empower our own so that we create our own um, possibilities. We create our own um, environments that can be able to create opportunities for our young people. Mm -hmm. Speaking of linking the world to Africa, we talk about junior NBA. Kenya was uh, privileged to be among the countries where we had that and you are the one who spearheaded that. How was the first edition? First edition was fantastic. So um, the, the Junior NBA is uh, 30 schools mm -hmm. um, and it's run literally like the NBA. So you yes. have a league where you have uh, kids between the age of 10 to uh, 14. 10 to 14, yes, under 16 in some countries. Uh, and the idea is really to give them an opportunity to play, to play basketball mm -hmm. um, and, and, they, and they move forward with the game. Um, I, I was also very privileged to be in Kogelo to witness uh, Obama opening up the, the basketball uh, facility there, which is absolutely amazing. We put up the netball and volleyball pitch mm -hmm. there, but you know, we're, we're, we're very privileged to be part of, of, of that uh, facility opening. Mm -hmm. uh, we had um, a, an NBA star in the country, by the way, Bismarck Biombo. Oh, yeah, yeah of Charlotte mm -hmm. uh, And so, what the NBA wants to do is to be able to show African children that it's possible. And they bring in, you know, all these stars from from the NBA to be able to connect with them. And we're lucky as Kenya mm -hmm. uh, to be part of that that exciting um, experience mm -hmm. to, to bring that to, to, to our children. To our Ali, children. Ali, earlier on uh, last week, you were in Kogelo where Obama was launching, you know, the basketball court that was made there. But you told me it's not only about the basketball. There is a football uh, pitch. There is a volleyball uh, pitch that has also been set. And uh, you are talking about Sports Connect not being only about basketball, but other you know, other disciplines. disciplines. Yeah. How has the reception been on the other disciplines? Uh, it's, I would say it's amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, Auma, who is a mentor to me and almost her big sister, is, yeah. she's, um, she's incredible. Mm -hmm. Her desires for um, that facility to create opportunities mm -hmm. for the young people within that region and the greater Africa. Uh, and it's not just about basketball, it's about football, it's about, um, it's about netball, volleyball, hockey, uh, and really the opportunity to open up mm -hmm. and show the world that, you know what, we have raw talent here and that we can be able to nurture this raw talent to be something. Mm -hmm. uh, as, as we wind up, I'm, I'm, I, I want to know, you know, how receptive has Kenyan been to the idea of sports marketing? And this, this is your area. How, how receptive have Kenyans been to this idea of sports marketing? Um, it's not just sports marketing because sports marketing is just a facet. Mm -hmm. it's, it's literally sports business. Yes. I think we still have some way to go. Mm -hmm. We don't have our facilities sorted mm -hmm. out. Uh, and uh, it's not good to hit at the government, mm -hmm. but I'm going to hit at the government because I see potential. Yes. I see that we have potential to move our youth into something that's really, really big. Mm -hmm. The Big Four agenda didn't include anything uh, around sports. sports. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't understand why. 65% of our youth are under the age of 35. Not all of them are going to be doctors. Not mm -hmm. all of them are going to be engineers. Not all of them are going to be all these things. But many of them can work within the f realm of sports and not just being an athlete, creating a structure uh, or an environment that can be able to support the different facets of sports. Mm -hmm. And I think that we've not done enough. We've not done enough. But it's also because we probably don't understand. And so I'm willing and happy and able 
to be able to create, um, you know, to have those relationships, to build those relationships so that we can be able to do more for our young people uh, and for our nation, Kenya. I've seen you talk about sports tourism in different uh, forums here in Nairobi. And uh, do you think we're doing enough when it comes to sports tourism? Yeah, we have fantastic uh, events that happen. The mm -hmm. Stanchet Marathon is bringing people, Lower Marathon is bringing people. Mm -hmm. There's always opportunity to do more. Um, I think that as uh, initially, you know, just to start with, our nation is known for tourism mm -hmm. and we're known for sport. Uh -huh. Uh, being able to merge the two so that the rest of the world can come and experience what we take out there mm -hmm. is there. There's that opportunity for us to do that. So um, the marathons are doing it for us, but I think we can do more with the football, the basketball, volleyball, rugby. I think rugby is uh, kind of in the right direction, mm -hmm. uh, although the Safari Sevens is, you know, kind of wishy-washy here and there. But the opportunity is there. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay, thanks a lot. And uh, finally, are we going to see, when, when are we having the next uh, Vikapu Elite Camp? And... Uh, Junior NBA? Uh, Junior NBA is coming in uh, um, August, mm -hmm. end of August. Yes. Uh, we start the league and then um, the Kapu Elite is starting uh, in the next week and a half. So find us Sports Connect Africa uh, on Google. All our details are there. Uh, and you can, guy, anybody who would like to reach me can reach me on uh, c.mumbo at sportsconnectafrica.com. Of course, we'll be looking forward to seeing how the next uh, Vikapu Elite Camp uh, you know, goes on. That is the next uh, one and a half weeks. And Junior NBA coming up in September. In, in, in we, so uh, we have the training of trainers uh -huh. uh, uh, end of August, but the, the tip-off is in September. Tip-off in September. And you say this year probably not in Nairobi alone. Uh, I can't comment on that just yet, uh, but, but I can tell you that the plan is for sure to, to get the NBA to, 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 for the kids to have access to the NBA all over Kenya. Okay. Yeah. Thanks a lot for finding time to come here and I appreciate it. Of course, congratulations for being uh, named among the top 40 under 40 sports leaders in the world. The only African uh, to make that list, of course, the CEO and founder of uh, Sports Connect Africa, that is Cynthia Mumbo. She, she has been talking to us about her journey, how she got to where she is right now, and uh, she is uh, making moves, big moves uh, in sports in the world. Uh, Cynthia Mumbo, the CEO and founder, Sports Connect Africa. So, we'll